Oh, look, I'm playing games. In my car. Hey there guys and gals and welcome back to the D4A channel. Today I'm going to show you how to install this, which is my brand new stereo from Seikan that comes with built-in Android, Wi-Fi, 3G, Bluetooth, GPS, mirroring and a bunch of other really cool features. The first thing of course we are going to do is that we are going to unbox everything. When it comes to the packaging I have to say everything was packaged really nicely and securely and there was really no chance of anything getting damaged. Now here we have all the contents of the box outside. First up of course is the most exciting bit which is the unit itself. Here you can see me behind camera. Hey there. Now uh, I have to say the unit looks very sleek and smooth and the fit and finish is uh, to be honest better than I expected. On the unit already plugged in comes this little harness and this enables you to connect a whole bunch of different things to the unit itself. Now here you have a connection for your DVD player if you have one. You can also connect a rear view camera, uh, your uh, auxiliary inputs or anything else. You know you can think of it comes you know uh, supporting a whole wide variety of things. Next up we have this little thing which is a GPS antenna. This of course is for your GPS. The connection is to the back of the unit right here. Let me show you that. So right there, very simple. You just screw it in. After that we have this thing which is the uh, the main power harness. This connects right you know to the harness of your vehicle. This is basically plug and play and you do not have to do any sort of you know electrical connections, soldering or whatever else. As I said very simple. And the last we have this which is also a of course a simple connection. This goes to the back of the unit right here. And this is your input for your USBs, which is something I'm going to install as well today. So before we install the new head unit, we first need to remove the old one, of course. Now to do that, uh, I got a little tool called a panel popper, which I needed to remove some interior plastic trim, which was blocking access to the four bolts that are holding my old head unit in place. Now uh, these panel poppers are little plastic tools that you can buy whole sets of for just a few dollars. They're readily available, really cheap, but they're super useful because they will help you, you know, not break or damage interior, you know, plastic, which can be very expensive to replace. Now I'm installing my head unit into my daily driven Suzuki SX4, but regardless of which head unit you get, and in what kind of car you're, you're installing it, you're probably going to need to remove some plastic trim. So a set of these panel poppers is definitely going to be a good investment. So once the plastic trim was out of the way, all I had to do was remove these four bolts and pull the old head unit out. Once the old unit is out, simply disconnect the main harness and the radio antenna and set it aside. I decided to install the USB input cables into a storage compartment in my center console. To do that I needed to make a hole on the back of that storage compartment and to do that I needed to remove the storage compartment. And to remove it I needed to remove my uh, AC module along with the storage compartment which was held down by six bolts and four little plastic clips just like this one. Once I removed the little storage compartment I used a very primitive way to make a hole in it. Basically I used a small screwdriver and then a bigger one to make the hole bigger basically. Once the hole was made I simply pulled the USB cable through it and voila one discreetly hidden USB input in my center console. So now it's time to see whether the Seikan actually fits nicely inside here. First, let's do all the connections. So, here we have our 
USB thing that we just installed. So that is in. Next up we have the connection, the main one. Connect that to the vehicle harness. I believe that goes like this. So that is in as well. And then we have this bad boy, which goes right in here. Okay, so that is in too. Now, I won't be connecting the GPS antenna because if you're an average car user, commuter, you really do not need the GPS antenna. It's needed only if you need a stronger GPS signal for GPS tracking or if you're driving a lot, you know, in areas where the GPS signal is very weak. For example, I don't know, in some forests or in, you know, city canyons where there's a lot of tall buildings if you're there all the time you might need the gps antenna but for 90 you know five percent of people out there you really don't need it so i don't need it and i won't be installing it so let's see if this thing actually fits okay so that goes there that goes there that's nice that's nice as well once the unit is in, simply bolt in the four bolts into the exact same spaces as they were before with the stock unit and then pop the plastic trim in place. After that, you can turn it on and start using it. Now, when you first turn on your new head unit, your steering wheel buttons won't work but it's easily solved by going into the steering wheel button learning mode in the settings of the head unit and then simply push a you know steering wheel button and select the corresponding key you wanted to control after that after you have you know assigned a key to all the steering wheel buttons they will work just as they did with the factory unit Now, a really neat feature of this head unit is the USB input we have installed. Now, because this is an Android head unit, it means that you can do more with your USB than just listen to the music you have on it. It means that you can browse pictures on your USB or even watch the videos you have put on your USB. But the feature you will probably be using the most is the Bluetooth connection of this head unit. Now this enables your smartphone to access your head unit just like any other Bluetooth device by simply pairing with it. And that will enable you to make phone calls directly from the head unit and even to speak you know using the head unit because it has a built-in microphone. <laughs> The dial number is not in use. It also enables you to listen to music uh, on your smartphone. You can even skip songs, uh, but there's a little, you know, negative point here is that the head unit isn't displaying, you know, the title or the name of the song and the artist. So this head unit being pretty much an Android tablet means that you have access to the Play Store and the unlimited options offered on the Play Store. That means you can download you know, different apps, you can download games, 
You can even watch movies from the Play Store or listen to music. Now, if that isn't enough, uh, you can use Google Maps to navigate yourself around or you can even use Google Chrome to access whatever you want on the internet, you know, and watch some really cool videos. Wink, wink. Another really cool option of this head unit is the ability to mirror the content of your smartphone on the display of the head unit. To do this, simply get your smartphone's USB cable, connect it into the USB input, uh, access the easy connected app on the head unit, uh, enable USB debugging in the developer options on your smartphone and away you go. As you can see, the head unit's display is now mirroring the content from your smartphone but it's doing more than that it's actually enabling you to control the content you know and use it just as you would on your smartphone Now one of my absolutely favorite features of this head unit is that it can make your car look like a race car. You can do this by downloading the Torque app and displaying different dials and gauges with real-time information you know, from your engine's ECU right there on your head unit. Now you can do this in one of two ways. Uh, uh, method number one is to simply download the Torque app directly to your head unit and then connect your head unit to a OBD2 dongle plugged in your car. Now be warned, this particular head unit from Seikan cannot connect to a Bluetooth OBD2 dongle. It can only connect to a Wi-Fi OBD2 dongle. If you must use a Bluetooth OBD2 dongle, you can simply use your smartphone because it can connect to such a dongle and then mirror your smartphone's content on your head unit display. Either way, you know, uh, it's really simple and uh, driving with a bunch of cool dials and gauges on your head unit is going to be really, really fun. So that's it when it comes to the install and review of the Android head unit from Seikan. I have to say that all in all, I'm really pleased with the product and that it's better than I expected. Uh, the negatives, there are only two negatives. Uh, number one is that uh, the visibility isn't perfect when the unit is exposed to direct sunlight. Uh, it's not to say that it's really bad, but it could be a bit better. I think another culprit uh, to that is the fact that the unit, the position of the unit in the Suzuki uh, is exposed. It isn't recessed at all into the dashboard. So th that might be contributing, you know, to the sunlight making visibility a bit poor but still it isn't all that bad and you can you can live with it pretty nicely uh, the other negative is that uh, when you're using Bluetooth with your phone you cannot see the names of the music you're playing so you're just blindly clicking next song and you cannot see on the screen you know the name of the song you're actually listening to that's pretty much it when it comes to the negatives when it comes to the positives there's honestly uh, quite a few more then you know then the bad things and the positives are definitely uh, the, the touch screen i'm very impressed with the touch screen it's fast it's responsive and it feels really nice you know uh to use it also uh, the fact that this thing is an android and you, that you have access to the play store pretty much gives you unlimited options of what you can do with this with this thing i definitely really like the the torque app and the fact that you can turn your car into something that looks like you know a race car instead of a boring family commuter other positives are definitely that the install was really easy uh, that the unit works factory that it blends in perfectly with the interior of the car so that's a big you know big plus it, it doesn't look like something you took you bought somewhere and installed it um, also another big positive is that this thing is pretty 
cheap. If you want to get one of these for your car, whichever car you have, uh, on the website of the Seikan, you can browse around and you can see they have a lot of different units for a lot of different makes and models. I have actually set up a little discount code uh, on the website uh, and you can use it actually on the website. So if you check the description of the video and if you, if you check the first pinned comment down below, you can see the code and you can use it uh, when buying any of the units to get a little bit of a discount. So that's pretty much it for the review and install. As always, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked the video. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, of course, don't hesitate. The comment section, it's right down there below. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to share, like, comment and subscribe. And I'll be seeing you soon on the D4A channel.